Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. This week we have been going through some apologetic arguments that we have seen that have been used in the history of the world to make the case that there is a God and that Jesus Christ is his son. Today we're going to talk about the teleological argument for the existence of God. Just think design. We might think of various Psalms such as Psalm 104 when we read that God created everything in this beautiful thing in this world that he has made for us. Verse 24, how many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. We may all think, also think about Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. The teleological argument for the existence of God really points to the idea that there is design in the world and that the design had to come from somewhere. When we think about teleology, we think about the word telos in Greek, which means design, purpose, end, or goal. You may think of telescope. This scope goes to the end. It goes beyond. It has a goal so that we can see something far away. So when we look at the world and we see the different sorts of causes that we mentioned, I believe, on Tuesday, the idea that we have a material cause, we're made of things, that we have a formal cause, we take a certain form, all things do. We have an efficient cause, something had to put this all together to make it or whatever. But we also have the teleological cause, the idea of purpose, that we were made for something and that we were designed for that something, for that ultimate goal. Now, teleology, this argument, has a lot to do with science and the design that we see in the world, but it's also deeply philosophical. I mean, just to think about the answer to the question, why am I here? Why do I even exist? What is my goal, my destiny? What is my, what is my telos? The answer of a God who designed this place specifically for our enjoyment, that he would make us righteous so that we could love others, that he would lift us up to this high degree to be a part of his creation and his love of the world. Well, there's no other telos, destiny, end, goal, purpose that matches up to that. So let's think scientifically just for a second. When we look out in the world, not only do we come to the conclusion that something had to cause this place because everything is contingent on everything else, we also notice that there is design. Now, some people scoff at this argument, but I think it's pretty good. If I would walk in a forest and I would see that there is something glimmering among the leaves and I pick it up and it's an old pocket watch and it's, there's something engraved on the back and it, and, and it still is working, ticking a little bit. And so the, the gears in there are still working even though it's been out into the elements for who knows how long. I wouldn't say to myself, this is a random thing that I just found in nature, like a leaf or a rock. No, I would say this belongs to somebody. Somebody lost it because this was something that was made. This was designed and it was designed with a purpose to tell time. And it probably brought somebody a great joy. Maybe it was a gift from somebody. I wouldn't look at that and say, well, that was just a random thing that came together these metal and these springs and all this and the chain and all that kind of stuff came together randomly to produce 
this pocket watch. No, I look at design and I say somebody had to design that. Well, when we look in nature, we see things working together. We see a design. Some people will say there is no design, it's just all random, but even those people, most of them will say, it appears as if there is design, that all of this works together and works together for a purpose, for, for a goal, that the tree out there is built in a certain way, not just for it to survive to the next generation, but it produces oxygen and produces many other things for us, that all of these things work together. We can go even a little bit deeper and say that there are certain forces, that there are certain uh, things in nature that have to be precisely tuned, like um, the force of gravity, H how much radiation is in the atmosphere. There there's all sorts of these little things that have to be precise in order for there to be life that exists. It seems very odd that this would just be random. And even if it was random, you still haven't answered the question of where it all came from. It seems more plausible that there was a designer, somebody pretty smart and somebody pretty powerful and somebody that was free in order to design this place. Now, of course, someone could say, well, there maybe are just, it just was chance, right? And, it, and we just won the cos cosmological lottery that it just happened in this little place right now that we could have the right circumstances for a life that it seems that is designed. But who knows, maybe there is an endless amount of universes and they all have these different things that are off just a little bit and we just happen to be in the one lucky enough to have life. But I don't know that we really, first of all, think that there is an endless amount of universes. That doesn't really seem to make sense. It doesn't seem to, it doesn't answer the question, well, well, how, how, could that, how could that come about? What or who caused that? But even when we look at randomness, we, we very rarely see pattern. Think about flipping a coin. If I, if I flipped a coin a hundred times, how many times do you think that it would be heads and how many times do you think it would be tails? And the more we go and the more we go, well, you know the answer to this, that it's probably going to be even out. It's going to be pretty close to 50-50, 50 times it goes to heads and 50 times it goes to tails. But what we don't see there is a pattern. We don't see a one in a million thing. It would be very odd if we flipped a coin a million times and it all came up heads and no tails. We would wonder, that, that doesn't, we don't experience that. Not only that, but we don't experience something very complicated like a computer code. Like, for instance, the building blocks of life, right? And so the idea of randomness doesn't really fully answer the question because we're looking at something that is designed, that we're looking at something that is language, uh, similar to language. Here's another example. If we just randomly somehow spit out letters, we may get a lot of different uh, versions of, of what those what those letters would come up to. But we would never really come up with the idea, and through our results, that we could have all of Shakespeare's plays in order. We could see a lot of different results, but we wouldn't see results that mean something, that have a purpose behind them, that looked like language. It just doesn't work with the rules of randomness. And so when we look at the world, I think it's a pretty fair conclusion that there had to be somebody pretty smart that designed this place. I don't think it takes any great genius to know that there was a mind out there. And most people in the history of the world, vastly most people in the history of the world, and including today, understand, even if they're not Christian or even religious, understand that there had to be a designer some way, somehow. And once again, we say to our dear skeptical friends, if you have this idea of a designer or something out there, there's one thing big missing from that, and that is love. But the idea that we have a God who is loving, this uniquely Christian God who made this place for us, not just that we were a part of creation, but he made creation for us, seems to be a better explanation for why we human beings desire things. 
and have wonderment and want to learn about this design of the world and have this thing called love and courage and all the rest just seems to be a more plausible way of looking at the world. And not only that, but we have this God who loved us enough so that we could live forever with him. It really is a game changer when you think about it. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And as he taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.